Well, Dave, let's talk about where it began. How did you get involved in harness racing? Because, of course, uh, your grassroots are in the South Island. Yeah, that's right. Um, I just through um, my grandparents and, and uncles and aunties and whatnot, they were involved, and they were just small time. But um, I was, I mean, I've got a recollection of sitting in the feed boxes while they were doing doing the doing the um, boxes and cleaning them, and um, yeah, you just sort of just something that sticks with you, you know, and. Um, so I was probably always going to do, you know, be involved with horses, and um, and then we had a family move to the North Island, and uh, I was still at school, so uh, sort of missed it. But every school holidays used to be back down there, and um, you know, we, I'd be going to the races, and you know, um, sitting on the side of carts and whatnot, trying to get a drive, and <laughs> you know, but um, no, and and it was tough tough to get a license um, when I tried. We had to go through a cadet scheme and. And really, you had to be working full time for a trainer, and I couldn't do that with with my employment. So, you know, it was it was tough, but um, I I learnt a lot. You know, I was learnt the proper way, probably. You know. So you were first licensed. I think it was the early nineties, ninety two, and for those first sort of five or six years, couple of winners a year, just just keeping the interest, just enough. Yeah, there. yeah. Well, I was getting has beens and and um, you know, and and just trying to. I oh, just trying to. I, I would have worked anything to be to be honest, you know. But um, you know, I just had to learn a few things. Like um, probably Michelle taught me how to how to shoe a horse because she wouldn't give me money to pay someone to put them on. <laughs> <you know? laughs> but I mean, hey, those are the things you go you do, and and, and it's helped me out a little later in life, you know. So. Towards the end of the nineties, I think your best season was six or seven wins. But then there was a hiatus there because, of course, back then you weren't doing it full time. You had another job. Yeah, that's right. I was a I was involved um, in telecommunications. I was actually working for Telecom and, and got um, offered to do some field work for a um, for a dial out modem for Coca Cola and their vending machines. And um, it was successful and we got it up and running in New Zealand. And then I had to get to Australia. Well, they offered me a contract that was worth, financially worth it to get over there and get it up and running. So we went to, it was actually in WA, and I had a few years over there and really enjoyed it. I liked it. Michelle didn't quite like it, uh, too far away from home, from family and that, but um, yeah, I loved it. And I was still involved, I took a couple of horses over there. Took a horse called Temple of Zeus and Gaelic Adam Raider, and yeah, we had some fun times, you know, yeah. All right, came back here, set yourself up, best season, 2007 and eight, and right amongst that, along came a bonny little filly come mere bachelorette. Yeah, she, yeah, we planned to go to the sales and buy, and um, like me being Scroogey, I, I just, I didn't want to spend too much and wanted the best horse, but uh, to be fair, David Butcher actually liked her, and when I asked him for some advice and that, he pointed me that way, and, and I liked what I saw her in that, and, and um, we secured two that year, one for six thousand, one for eight thousand. She was the eight thousand dollar buy, and and she was fun. She it didn't she, all start out there in skittles. Though. I think it took what yeah. ten starts to get a win. Yeah, she did. She she was um she she used to tie up a lot. We had to go through and, and sort of work that out. Um, um and I I knew the potential was there. Um, you you just tell. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, she won her first race at Oteki, and I was on my way. I was quite confident. I was on my way down to the Sales Series race, and I had to get a win to to, to be an, uh, to be eligible. And uh, and she ended up running third in that Sales Series. She did. Race, yeah, didn't it, she? Was a, yeah. it was a courageous run. I think she drew. She may have drew second line. I think. And, yep. And she went. She went really good. You know. Yeah. She went on from there, and of course, uh, well, yeah. arguably her best win was in the age pace at uh, Kai Cora. That was an outstanding performance. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, it was. Um, yeah, it was a great day as a uh, you know in, in Kai Cora, and uh, yeah, I, I was at the top of the straight, and I could, I really couldn't see much, and um, but there was a big screen there. Um, so you honed and, in on that. Yeah, 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 yeah. and I, I'd seen, um, I'd seen Philip give a bit of a salute, so. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I started wandering up there. There the are plenty of other thrills with her. Of course, she was favourite for the Harness Jewels, but she copped the worst draw. And yeah, yeah. Ironically, it was the first Jewels race, and they went unbelievable time, didn't they? It was the first Jewels day, yeah. Yeah, it was probably one of the quickest first halves, you know, probably recorded in the Jewels. Yeah. yeah, something like that, yeah. But, um, I, hey, listen, we just thought maybe she had enough respect, and she didn't. And she got left posted, and uh, 
you know, she, she was courageous still in that run, you know. She ended up winning nine for you and then ultimately she was sold. I suppose one of the other great memory getting beat by one dream I think was in the Queen of Hearts she was fantastic yeah, that yeah, day too yeah yeah she was so I think it was only a short margin and you know I turning for home I thought we've got it you know yep. we've done enough but uh, well, one dream was just too good you know? and, and she was a good filly wasn't she you know? yeah yep certainly uh, look from then you've pretty much been able to have a go at this caper full time as has been reflected by your results yeah it was it was a, it was a couple of years ago um, and I was no, it was probably three years ago and I was starting to t trying to mix the working um, and doing the horses and and it was it was real, it was tough and I made the call a couple of years ago where we were going to have a real crack at it and um, sold part of the business off and um, and just uh, yeah got in and, and yeah yeah just you know still trying to buy some horses at the sales and but you've got to be successful to, to get your owners. And, um, you know, because it's tough today for most trainers, you know. 2011, 18 wins, 10 in 2012, and this season already you're up to 16. And yeah. for the first time you've broken the $100,000 barrier mark in, in stakes. That must have been, uh, you know, a, a pretty nice moment for you and Michelle. Yeah, was it? Was it over? Oh, no, yeah, 167, there you yeah, go. Okay, yeah, okay. Well, yeah, that's... Yeah, that's good. Yeah, more tax. <laughs> but you can't get those wins without having a bit of quality. And, of course, yeah. you've got Mr Mara, one of your flagship horses, and yeah. his great run in the Group 1 size at Addington. That was a yeah. terrific third in that race. And Angelina Jolie, who's really shot the name to the fore. Yeah, she's um, she's exciting. I, I didn't expect her to be a, um, as good as what she's probably doing um, as a two-year-old. She's a big horse, and I, I thought she was going more like three, and she probably she still is. But um, yeah, it's she showed she showed enough anyway. But she's one of those horses that wins the tight ones, and you know that, it's quite exciting. She is exciting. Yeah. The influence of the Butcher family on what you've been able to achieve so far has been nothing short of massive. Yeah, absolutely. Like. Um, um, John, he's been. Yeah, you know, I've asked him for advice, um, and then David, he he gives me. He's always got honest opinions about them, and and um, whether it's not quite good enough or um, gear issues, you know. He, you know, um, Zach's been great. He's, uh, you know, I probably I was giving Zach drives at the workouts before he, you know, when he was trying to get a license and whatnot, and. I could see the potential in him. Uh, young Gifted, ben, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Young Ben, he's going to get his licence, I think, this year. He comes down and gives us a hand in fast work and education. And, um, you know, and Philip drove for me um, through the time when I was sort of doing it sort of semi-professionally. And, uh, no, they've all been fantastic, yeah. You had a few other influences, and, and one who makes his way up north every now and again, and one Fred Fletcher. You're certainly tapping into his uh, knowledge. Yeah, yeah, I'm a great believer. Um, he's, he's been fantastic, and he's shown me a lot of things. And um, and if you're prepared to learn, I suppose, you, you can take a bit out of each everybody. And But he, yeah, he really is has helped me, yeah. You're doing a dozen odd horses. Um, I'm picking Michelle has quite a big part to play here. Yeah, yeah, she gets grumpy from time to time <laughs> and that, and, you know. But, uh, yeah, no, it's a, it's a family thing, you know. Like, um, my father, Eric, too, he really, he helps me out. He, I mean, he does a lot of um, things at chores at home and whatnot. He got a little bit ill, but he'd normally be here and doing a lot of groundwork and whatnot. And he's only just given up driving in the last 12 months, so... But um, it is he must be thrilled yeah. by what you've been able to achieve so far. It must get a yeah. real kick out of it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and um, no, but none of the kids are interested whatsoever. Yeah, so um, they might be interested in that hundred and sixty-seven odd thousand stakes that have kicked in. Well, eventually. Be, well, to be fair, my daughter she she's got a share of Megatron. He won his last start a couple of weeks ago, and I, I don't think he'd even pulled up. And she'd text, "How much do I get?" Because she's got a share. <laughs> Oh, well, they've got some interest then. Yeah, yeah. Um, an owner that's given you quite a big leg up, Pat Labori. Yes, Pat has, and he's he's been fantastic. And um, you know, I I just he came on board with a couple, and then he's prob obviously you know he liked what he saw, and um, and I just try and give them honest feedback, and and I just said to him before you start, if I sack one, don't go get grumpy, you know, and. Um, and he's been he's been terrific. We've been able to sell one or two for him, and 
and uh, he's having a great run, to be fair, and, and his breeds, um, he's a breeder, so it's important for his horses to go well, and, um, and uh, so he's going to do well out of that in the next few years, I'd say. Yeah. Dave Carr, what does the future hold for you? Are you a goal-setting man, or are you, are you pretty much the laid-back character that you come across as, and things will roll the way they roll? Yeah, I, I think I don't like to put too much in front of you, in, myself, in front of myself. It just um, you take it as it comes. You don't know what's around the corner, and um, but I mean, like you closer you get to a group one, you, you sort of you know, I'd love to pull one off, you know. And the chances are that it could happen in the, in, in in another month or so, you know. And um, but it'd be great when it happens, you know. Like um, and then that's that's one under your belt, you know. And, but um, you come across to me like you're a man who's living the dream. Yeah, I, I love it. I really do. I really love it. You know, like I, um, and even the kids that come down, like um, Ben Butcher, as I said, Dylan Ferguson, Kyle Marshall, they're they're real keen too, and they, you know, it's a, just a real buzz. You know, so yeah, rubs off on you. Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I might seem grumpy to them, but you know, <laughs> but I'm not. I'm really happy. You know, yeah.